The data is unequivocal with walking. The lion's share of sustainable fat loss and metabolic health does come from a foundation of walking, from low intensity movement. We're gonna break down the science of why walking isn't just good for you, but why it's a non-negotiable tool for fat oxidation and glucose control. But then we're gonna pair it with a compound that I wanna talk about that works really well with walking. And it works at a cellular level to detoxify the system and amplify energy production and fat loss and can even course correct insulin resistance. So if you feel like you're putting in the work and you're working too hard and not seeing the results, it's because you're missing the foundation. We're building that today. So we're gonna break down a few different things. We have four distinct things I wanna cover in this video. First, we're gonna look at the data and the walking protocol. So we'll look at the stark data on mortality and how simple movement is a powerful antidote. Then we're gonna get into the metabolic reset piece, how it can actually work with our metabolism and change literally how we use fuel. Then I'll get into the compound piece that we can add into the mix to amplify our walking. And then I'll get into the performance blueprint, which gives you the exact actionable protocol to combine walking with this compound for the best performance and metabolic outcome. The bulk of my activity when I lost 110 pounds was not really in the gym. I mean, I loved the gym, but it was walking. And the science on this is really clear when it comes to longevity. There was a massive study published in The Lancet. Dr. Eric Berg talked about this not that long ago. It analyzed data from 15 different studies, and it was looking at step counts and all-cause mortality. The findings were pretty darn stark. Okay, There was a dose-dependent relationship between steps and your risk of dying, straight up. So in scientific terms, individuals that were walking 5,800 steps per day had a 40% lower risk of all-cause mortality compared to those that were walking 3,500 steps. At 7,800 steps, that risk dropped by 45%. And at 11,000 steps, they saw a 53% lower risk. And they're walking more and increasing their risk of getting hit by a bus. Okay, bad joke. But what that means is that the more you walk, the longer you are likely to live. Okay, it's a direct correlation. Living longer is one thing, but having a powerful, efficient metabolism today is another. I would rather live shorter and have a better metabolism and a functioning body than like live long and be metabolically dysfunctional and plugged into a machine. Bottom line, we're going to make sure the metabolism is good. So we're going to dive into the specific cellular mechanisms that allow walking to combat insulin resistance and metabolic dysfunction head on. So this is sort of walking's influence on a metabolic reset. If you're battling metabolic dysfunction, like insulin resistance or any of those things, walking should be a primary tool. Okay, when you move the large muscles in your legs, your glutes, your quads, your hamstrings, something happens at a cellular level and it's the contraction of these muscles pulling glucose out of your bloodstream without needing insulin. The operative words there, without needing insulin. This is known as insulin-independent glucose uptake. So these big muscles, these cells deploy specialized glucose transporters. It's called GLUT4. And these go up to the surface of a cell in response to physical activity, and it bypasses the need for an insulin signal. In other words, you're giving your pancreas a break while actively clearing excess sugar from your blood. This is a direct mechanical fix for metabolic problems. Walking also ends up using more fat as a percentage of fuel compared to high intensity activities. So this makes it super muscle sparing, right? High intensity work is great, but it does break down muscle a little bit more. So you're not catabolizing all the muscle that you worked hard for. In fact, you're actually supporting it because walking improves something called angiogenesis. This is the creation of new blood vessels. You're literally burning more infrastructure to your muscles and you're making them more efficient. So you're literally preserving muscle while burning fat. It's literally the optimal combination for body composition. But optimizing your external movement is only half the battle. Okay, we have to address what's happening internally at a cellular level. And in a moment, I'm gonna talk about something you would add into the mix. But before I talk about that, I wanna focus on gut health for just a second. Fat oxidation, believe it or not, can start in the gut. If your gut is balanced and you have less gut inflammation, you can have less insulin resistance. Okay, inflammation starts in the gut and insulin resistance is caused ultimately by inflammation. So one of the things that I suggest that anybody does when they're doing any kind of lifestyle overhaul is add good probiotic foods like kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, yogurt, add these in. I am telling you, I swear by them. If you can't do that, or even if you can do that, add a good probiotic in. I put a link for the one that I use down below. It's called Seed. This is a really, really, really top-notch clinical probiotic. So it's not like a weird fly-by-night cheapie. It is a 
quality one. And if you're looking for really recolonizing the gut with good bacteria, you need something that has the clinical evidence behind it. Otherwise, that stuff just gets destroyed in your gut. Okay, the hydrochloric acid in your gut will break down all those bacteria and it's not going to do you any good. So the link down below is a 20% off discount link for a daily symbiotic from seed. So it has a prebiotic and a probiotic in it. So check that one out. It's really effective. You'll notice it pretty quick. You'll start to notice, wait a minute, I feel more alive. I'm sleeping better. Those are all the things I noticed within a couple of weeks. So that link is down below. So if we look at how walking works on the body, there is an intersect with a cool compound called TMG. Okay, trimethylglycine. It's also known as betaine, okay? And it addresses a lot of the same things we're trying to address with just simple walking, but at a molecular level, which is really cool. So one of TMG's most critical roles is its function as what's called a methyl donor. So what that means as a methyl donor is in scientific terms, TMG donates a methyl group in what is called a remethylation pathway of homocysteine. So it converts a harmful amino acid back into a not so harmful thing, right? So high homocysteine is well established as a risk factor for cardiovascular disease and a bunch of other metabolic diseases. So what that means is that TMG is a cleanup crew for a toxic substance in your blood called homocysteine, which is something that lowers when we walk more. So it's like collaborative, it works really well. So high levels of homocysteine ends up being kind of like rust in your cardiovascular system and TMG neutralizes it. But TMG doesn't really stop there. It's also what is called an osmolite. Okay, this is something quite interesting. TMG accumulates, actually builds up within cells and maintains cell volume and fluid balance. So particularly under stress like dehydration or exercise. Why is this important? It basically means that TMG helps your cells stay hydrated and ultimately resilient against stress. So this makes your cells tougher, it makes them more efficient. And it's not just a defensive player because TMG has a really powerful performance enhancing effect. So when you combine that with walking, you actually create a really potent synergy. So it actually can help you increase fat loss from your walking. So now I wanna give you the protocol that allows you to put this all together. I'll call it sort of a blueprint for it. So TMG has really powerful implications for your performance because it's basically helping your body not only oxidize fuels better, but it also helps your body create more creatine, which is kind of interesting. So it helps support creatine synthesis. So you've probably heard me talk a lot about creatine before, maybe you haven't, but essentially it's an energy reserve, right? So by helping your body create more of its own creatine, TMG is helping boost your muscle power reserves, but it also helps you recover and get more of an anti-inflammatory effect from your walking. So it helps your muscles produce more of like a quick burst energy, which may not help you a lot with walking, but believe it or not, it's going to make it so that you have more reserve when you're walking. If you have more power, if you have more reduction in fatigue, you're gonna be able to have more pep to your step when you're walking, but you're also gonna be able to get more just overall metabolic benefit out of it. So here's how I'd suggest you combine using walking in TMG to get like the maximum effect or synergistic effect. So first, obviously like a daily walk, but I know it's hard to get, I don't know, the full seven to 10,000 steps in one walk. If you can do seven to 10,000 steps like in one setting, that is really good because you're already in that fat oxidation mode. So I do recommend chunking it if you can. But these little chunks that you add together, that makes a difference. So if you're at 3,500, add a thousand more, okay? Just do little bits here. Even walk around the house. That literal 1,000 step difference can give you a 12% lower risk of all-cause mortality. So if possible, walk first thing in the morning. That way you're getting sunlight, you're getting the circadian optimization, and you're putting yourself in a spot where your metabolism is a little bit more functioning and you probably get more fat loss. And then of course, just integrate movement throughout the day. It's really just needs to be a non-negotiable part of your life that you just walk around as much as you can. And then with the TMG, a common effective dose is between anywhere from one and a half to six grams per day. So if you're looking for performance, you might wanna take TMG like maybe 30 minutes before a workout or before a long walk. But if it's for like general health and just methylation stuff, you really can take it with any meal. It's more about consistent daily intake. So if performance or fat loss, yes, it does matter. Otherwise it doesn't. So if you combine sort of the metabolic advantages of walking with the cellular performance and optimization effects of TMG, you're actually addressing the root causes of fatigue. It's making it so that your body's able to burn more fat while you're walking. This is how you get your energy back. This is how you start burning more fat. This is how you kind of reclaim your metabolism. I also did a video here that does a deep dive on cinnamon. You might find this one interesting, how you can add cinnamon to your coffee to have a profound effect 
on insulin levels in the body. Really important for the metabolism. So that video is right here. As always, keep it locked to hear my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.